It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob Warshack, whatever you, want, you would like to call me, and we will be picking up from where we left off, I believe at episode 6. That was right before I headed off on my beach trip, which was really fun. It was just a really long drive. I'll get I'll get into the stories later. For now, let's look at our quests. So we got win two games as a rogue warrior. I'm pretty sure our arena is a rogue, so we'll keep this one. Uh, deal 100 damage to the enemy heroes, that's fine. And then paladin or warrior, I think we're going to get rid of this one and see if we can get something more. Priest or warlock, well, that doesn't help us at all either. Okay, so I guess we'll just go into Arena. None of our decks are actually that great yet, so playing Ladder as of now may not be that great. And then also playing the same Mage deck over and over again. I've had a couple comments saying, hey, build a different deck. Kind of tired of seeing Mage. But at the same time, it's just like, if I play anything else, but like Mage is the best class to play probably by far if you do not have any cards whatsoever because of like Flame Strike, Polymorph, Fireball. All those are uh, cards that are... For pretty much, you're able to get rid of whatever your opponent plays for the most part. Even the amount of field cleared it has with flame strikes insane. But if you play like rogue or druid, uh, if you don't have like the epics or legendaries, it's kind of hard. Like big game hunter and keeper of the grove and things like that to be able to silence and or get rid of your opponent's cards. So that's why mage is so great uh, for beginners and starting off, just because the core set's just so great. I feel like I'm rusty right now. I haven't recorded in like three or four days. I, I had like a whole bunch of videos lined up because I knew I was going to the beach and I knew I wasn't going to be recording because I was going to be either too drunk to do it, not in the mood, or of course I'm going to be at the beach and just not by my computer. And I actually did try to record while I was in the room and that didn't work out too well. The lighting was horrible. It looked like I literally had a holy nova on the side of my face because the sun was so bright uh, two days in a row. So off the bat, I, I enjoy this hand. I think the ringleader is nice. If we would have coin and ringleader, I'd say fantastic, but we don't. So I think this is good. Have a two drop and have a three drop. I can't really, can't really ask for much more than that. Oh, backstab helps us too. So since he's going first, maybe he'll coin into something with two health. No, I'm going first. Why did I say he's going first? Obviously, he's going. Or he's going second because we have coin. He has the coin. Anyway, hopefully, well, even if he does go second, hopefully he coins into something with less than two health, and then we'll be able to play the uh, the ringleader. I remember in Vanilla when this card was used in almost every rogue deck to combo off like the first turn. It's a really good card. Oh, it used to be a really... It still is a good card, just not as good. Okay, so we actually have the option to backstab and uh, ringleader to get like a crazy start and then the following turn iron fur, but I think holding the backstab and the ringleader for now is just better. Uh, using our passive to kill off his 1-1 is nice because if he turn 2 and he passives again, uh, we'll be able to kill it and summon an iron fur. And then from there, we have, like, drops almost every turn, so. Also, uh, to answer some of your questions regarding, uh, they're like, why don't you make arena guides? <laughs> what, what do you, what do you think this is? <laughs> this is, a uh, pretty much an in-depth guide to arena using multiple different classes on a free-to-play account, so. To answer kind of your question of how to play arena, just watch these videos and I run through arena and exactly why I do what I do on these. Um, I think that's a little bit better than just playing, I guess, I don't know, hold on, let me let me think out this move and then I'll answer that further. So from here we can kind of, obviously we're going to kill this off and I think we just iron fur because we could deal two damage to his face but this is normally in arena, you'd use this to make value trades instead of going face because this is not a face hunter deck. We said also since we don't have a turn four, we could also play this assuming that we're going to use our passive next turn, which I'm going to actually play that because next turn we can backstab, play this, passive, swing twice with this, and then we'll have two cards from this, and then turn five, obviously, will knight. So, like, those of you regarding the questions, like I said, um, why don't you make arena runs and how to play arena better, that, that all is in this these kinds of videos. Uh, for the most part, on our free-to-play account, or in this free-to-play account, free-to-play account, we will be doing arena for the most part. I mean, of course, we'll do the occasional you know, uh, ranked, uh, or ladder, I should say, to get the end of the month rewards, but until we have a pretty solid deck, and we'll only have a solid deck through doing arena, this is your best bet to kind of learn how to play arena. It's just uh, these videos right here. Okay, so, he really didn't play anything that great. I think, um, hmm. I wanted a passive and then backstab, but he didn't really play anything to backstab worthy. If we passive, then we can still only play the the bandit, and he doesn't get comboed. So I'm pretty sure... Hmm. Wow, that really puts puts a damper on what I was going to do. Hmm. 
Wow, that really sucks. I, I was uh, that's, that's that's when you know there's an issue is when you plan on your opponent playing something and then they just don't. Like neither of these things are worth backstabbing. And then playing the iron for Grizzly, it just ugh, it feels so wrong. Whatever. We won't even play the iron for. There's no point to throw up the taunt for now. Well, that sucked. Because if we if we backstab the taunt and then we play the ringleader and whatnot, we're really prone to consecrate. Because all you'd have to do. Yeah, we, he, two of our cards would die, and then all he had to do is deal one damage to whatever the fuck this Seahawk-looking creature is. Dragonhawk Rider. Let's take a closer look at this card. So, it is what looks like... Okay, that's definitely a goblin. Who's got a sugar cane looking weapon. Or jouster. On, I don't know what kind of fucking creature. I'm not even gonna... I'm not even gonna guess what kind of fucking creature that is. It's a dragonhawk, obviously, but... Trying to describe that creature in a way that it makes sense, I'm not sure I can. Mm -mm. All right, so he played the horse rider. He's gonna swing into this. Obviously, his one one's gonna kill off our three, and then from here, do I see him doing anything? Obviously, we're gonna be using our passive to either kill one of these two cards next turn. With one mana, I don't see him doing anything else. He's probably just gonna end turn. I'm not sure if he used coin yet. He could coin into a passive, but that'd be really kind of a waste of a coin. Okay. So um. We definitely need to use our passive, which brings us down to three mana, which doesn't allow us to do a whole lot. Kill off this. I think Grizzly's fine. If we play the Horse Rider again, he can just knock off that shield with Consecrate or something, and then it won't be able to make that value trade when we want to, or that burst damage when he doesn't expect it. But playing an Iron for a Grizzly is just a bigger creature on the board, and it has taught. So he's going to pass. It doesn't look like this guy's hand is that great. Or he has a very late game hand. He hasn't played anything that, like, detrimental at all. Like, he's just been kind of, like, tooting along. Barely playing what he needs to. But I think we're in a pretty good position now. I mean, we've got three semi-decent creatures on the field. They can't be concentrated down. We've got an assassinate if he plays anything. And then we also have backstab. And then the ringleader if he ever field clears. Because we now we, do, we definitely do not want to play the ringleader until he concentrates. Now that I'm thinking, when you said how to play, in the questions regarding how to play arena better, were you talking about, like, you want arena tip videos, specifically just tips in arena, or me playing arena and talking about how to do better in arena? I guess uh, you, I guess you could have meant you actually just want specific tip videos, like five general tips to be a better arena player or something like that. Alright, so we use a secret and a passive. What is this guy's hand holding? Does he have, like, like, fucking Exodia in here or something? Is he waiting for all five pieces? Oh. I have no fucking idea what this guy's holding. I'm kind of scared, though. Alright, so we're gonna weapon kill this. Not a Noble Sack. Not a Redemption. Nothing. Um. Swing. Nothing. Nothing. Oh no, okay. It is something. <laughs> an eye for an eye. <laughs> That's funny. I think we just horse rider. We're just gonna go all in, boys. Even if he concentrates, what? He kills two cards? And it takes up four of his mana, so then he has three mana left. What would he do with three mana? Cog hammer? Cog hammer, nothing. The card, the R4 6, our spectral. Is that what it's called? The spectral knight? Yeah, this guy's a beast in arena. It just can't be targeted by hero powers and or spells, which really helps. So he's going to drop a 7 drop, heal for 6. Still doesn't put him at, uh, I don't think that's safety. Because this is 4, 8, 11, 15, 17. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I, I'm assuming this guy's hand was like all big drops because, oh god, did I miss target? Okay, no, I'm good. Because he didn't, like, what other creature did he play all game? Besides his one ones, I have no idea. Nothing worthy though. All right, so we got two quests heading on to being done. We got one more with this one, and then probably like two or three more with our other quest to deal 100 damage to the enemy hero, and that'll be done. Uh, I'm assuming this deck will hopefully get to at least seven wins. That'd be nice, and then we'll also make a profit. Like I said, seven wins is kind of where you want to be at with the arena decks, but I'm sure we'll be able to do it with this rogue. Rogues, rogues, a decent class to play in arena. Okay, so I'm assuming we're probably gonna go against. I, I have a feeling we're gonna go against a hunter or a mage. I'm getting, I'm getting the feels right now. Maybe even like a sprinkle of shaman. 
Paladin. Should have guessed that. Most picked class in Arena by far. It's the best, but... I mean, that's why it's picked so much, but still. Gotta explore, guys. You can't just pick Paladin every time it comes up, unless, like, all the other classes suck really bad. I think we'll keep the Horse Rider, right? It's a 3-drop. It's nice. We can coin into it. We can make some valuable trades. It sucks that it's passive summons 1-1s one that it will be able to, you know, kill off our Horse Rider with, with if it ends up killing it. But we have our weapon, so it's not too bad. Horse Rider is still a good card. When it first came out, I really didn't think Horse Rider was going to be, like, that great of a card. I'm like, a 3-drop for 2 damage? Eh, it's questionable. I would rather kind of play a Harvest Golem. But at, at that time, it was just, like... You only had, like, vanilla cards to compare it to, so. Mm -hmm. I miss the vanilla days. It was very simple. Nothing was too complex. Everybody was happy. It was a happier time. I think we just hold on to coin. I'm not, I'm not really scared of a Grimscale Oracle, to be honest. Not really scared. So right here, I'm expecting he's going to... If he plays a 2-drop, he he's got a nice curve. Even though the Grimskill Oracle's not a good card, it's still a 1-drop that he got on turn 1, which most of the time you don't. Unless you're playing Zombie Chow, and then you always seem to fucking get Zombie Chows. Let's see if we can break some pots. Ha <laughs> fuck you, pot. Does this pot break? Oh no, that shit comes out of it. Makes cool noises, though. Wow. What a, what a curve this guy has. It. Are we playing Arena? We sure we playing Arena right now? Who gets the Jewel Scarab on turn 2 and the Grim Scale on turn 1? So what a great one turn 1 card this Grim Scorable. Grim Grim Scale Oracle card is. Oh, just kidding. Alright, um... I think we just weapon. And what will kill this Grim Scale? Who knows? He could have more Murlocs in his deck. He could be playing, what, the 2-drop charge, and it'll actually do 3 damage if we don't kill that. But I don't think anything combos with this. Even though it's a beast, I don't think there's any Paladin cards that really go well with beast. If, we were playing, if he was playing Hunter, I probably would have killed the, killed the Jewel Scarab first. Alright, so he played a Spider Tank, which is one of the best 3-drops that he could have possibly played. Um, pretty much no matter what we play, actually... Do we have a two drop besides this? Because if we play this, we're still swinging into the one no matter what. Um, we could eviscerate, but in order to eviscerate, we kind of want to use it on a card. I guess we could coin out. I suppose we could coin out the Yeti. It won't die. And we can kill off the one one. That seems like a fine play, right? I don't really see a problem with that. Because now on turn four... We can passive and then throw down the barber, and then we'll kill off this, and hopefully he'll play at least he'll use his passive and or a card with two or less HP. Alright, so he's going to humility it now, which is perfectly fine. He goes face. Alright, so it looks like our mechanical yeti is on silver hand recruit killing duty. Alright. Um... I wish we had better combos, to be honest, because this is requires a combo, that requires a combo, oh, that's no combo, but this requires a combo. So we have two cards in our hand that require combos, and <laughs> we've got, like, no one drop to combo with. If it was turn five, I would say we'd be in a little bit better situation, because we could play a three drop and a two drop, but now, there's really not. Hmm. Do we just play the Dragonhawk? I think we do. We kill off this one drop. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no great play here, because if he doesn't kill this, it's going to get Wind Fury, and it's going to fuck his brains out next turn. If he does kill this, that's still okay, because we're going to be able to use our Horse Rider, make a value trade there, and then we're going to Viscerate what other card he plays, or if he just passives, then we're just going to Ringleader, and uh, hopefully he doesn't have a Consecrate. Yeah. So, I think this is a pretty good plan. If he goes face, though, that's pretty bad for him. But I don't think he's going to go face. He's definitely going to probably kill off the 3-3. But that's fine because, again, we planned for it with a horse rider. Because a horse rider is going to be able to kill. Or we could just weapon into the spider tank and save the horse rider's charge. I think either or is fine. Okay. Okay, so I think we horse rider like we said. We smack the horse rider into this. We smack that into that. And I believe we have to weapon here to kill this 1-1 one, one so it doesn't kill our horse rider. And now we have a weapon. So when it, whenever there's a good chance and there's a good opening, we'll be able to use the ass blade. Uh, but for the most part, we want to try to bring out creatures for as much... Uh, for as, wow, we're going to try to bring out creatures 
as quick as possible to kind of bring up this field and then worry about our weapons and, you know, the, the oil for a good... That's going to be a lot of damage because this already has four durability and this adds three attacks. So that's like a 6-4. It's looking pretty nice, but that requires nine mana. Unless you play them turns apart, then you wouldn't really want to attack with the Ass Blade until it gets the buff on it. So you can do the most damage over time, <clears throat> depending on the situation. If we had a one drop, the Pan Rider's nice, but we really don't have a one drop. So this is probably like a turn seven play. We'll combo it with maybe the Barber because this isn't a combo. Next turn, maybe if we can draw into... No, next turn. Ouch. Yeah, next turn's maybe Barber, Ringleader, Eviscerate, depending on what he plays. His turn six play, I'm not sure what a great turn six Paladin play is. Blood Knight, there's no... Okay. Tech card. And yeah, he's going to summon a 1-1. One, one. So his turn six was not that great. Alright. So, I think the most effective way... I think that's not... That's not, that's not too bad. We get out the Assassin's Blade. We kill off his 3-3, three, three, making value trades. Kill off his 1-1. One, one. Yeti's still getting perfect value. Recruit killing duty for the win. And I think we're in a pretty good situation here. Now we can actually throw down the Barber. This turns into a 4-3 and then put that on there. Which makes it a 7-3. Ouch. That's 21 damage potentially over the 3 turns with the weapon. That's a crazy amount of damage. And then this would be 25. He's at 28 health. So, if we can make contact with these two uh, creatures next turn, over the course of two more turns, we'll win. With just swinging with their weapon and using it this great. What is this paladin going to do? Move, car keys. I'm trying to put down the water. Another Guardian of the Kings. For heal for two? I, that's definitely value there, folks. All right, do we just go face at this point in time? Like, do we just, like, bombard the field full of shit? Or do we actually want to kill off that creature? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So let's barber. If this gives a creature three attack, could possibly kill this. If we run these two, that's three. Not sure. Because if it lands on any of these creatures, they're just going to die to Consecration, if he has that. But if we summon, like, this guy, and we kill off... Yeah, I think summoning this, and then using this to kill off that, is a little bit better. Because now, even if he uh, Consecrates... It's still not that big of a deal. And then next turn, we can still push a fuck ton of damage uh, being able to throw down a creature and then using the oil and or eviscerate. But before, he had the ability to consecrate and pretty much kill everything. So he's going to Iron Beak. It's still going to be, what, a 5-7? Oh, no, a 3-7. Wow, that's not very good at all. You know it's going to hit, like, every card on my side. And it's not even going to hit the owl once. Because <laughs> that would be too good, right? Oh, no, Mad Bomber going back to his hand. Oh, no, the owl. Okay, so now we have to recognize that he does have another silence. All right, that's the end of his turn. Okie dokie. Hmm. Mm, let's see if this guy one health. Not that one health is a huge factor in it, but I mean... Actually, I don't think that matters at all. For some reason, I think he returned the Mad Bomber to his hand. I don't know why that was going through his mind. I was like, make sure he doesn't get Mad Bomber down. He's still prone to Consecrate. Restore 4 health, gain 2 attack. What is he going to go, face? There's Consecrate, so there's one I said it doesn't really matter. So I guess he's going to gain 2 attack to go face, yeah. Because he can't kill the Shadow Pan, and he's not going to be able to kill the 4-4 four four unless he has another damaging ability. You can silence that? Wow, I had no idea you could you could do that. That's pretty cool. I thought it was untargeted by hero powers and or spells. I guess that isn't a spell and or hero power. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, so how much damage can we do here? We can do 3, 6, 10, 17. Still not game. Still not game. See what we draw. Backstab. I think we hold on to that. So we're going to go face, super face. 
and then next turn I believe we win. Because he's gonna whatever he's gonna play, we're either gonna iron beak or backstab it, and then we're for there, we're just gonna tinker. We won't play any more creatures, and then that on top of all the creatures on our field will win. So as long as he doesn't clear our field with like another concentrate, we're we're in a perfect situation. Wow, he got a quartermaster. That's pretty good for arena. Especially if you got like a muster for battle. Champion uses his passive. Alright. Perfectly fine. So we're actually gonna use backstab first. Um just so we don't play the Iron Beacon and the Iron Beacon getting really unfortunate with the uh, uh, with the oil on it. <clears throat> okay. So we're just going to backstab this. Throw down the oil. And of course it lands on like the lowest creature. And we're just going to swing with everything. That's tis be the game. I don't think we even had to oil. But still nice. Actually I think it would have been one off lethal if we didn't oil. Okay, so 40 gold for that one quest completed. Hopefully we'll knock out, how much damage did we do? We 24 more damage to knock out this next one that gives 40 more dust. We're almost back to 1,000 gold, not even including this arena run that we're going to complete and get gold from that as well. So we're doing pretty good on gold. I believe the first, uh, we definitely need Mad Scientist because one of the decks I plan to build is uh, Mech Mage and Midrange Hunter, if not Face Hunter. So you definitely need Mad Scientist for those along with like Lothab. So... Definitely going to probably unlock the next couple wings of Naxxramas whenever we get to, what do you say, like a good gold amount is like 2 or 3k? Because I believe it's like 700 gold a wing, and there's 4 wings, so it's 2800. Alright, so Priest, I think we're in a pretty good situation. I don't think, pri Priest is pretty good in Arena because the heal can just continuously keep creatures alive on his part, making huge value trades, but... As long as you're able to like, kind of swarm the field, priests don't have any cards like Flame Strike unless they get like a Light Bomb or a Holy Nova, and most of the time they only get like one of those, if at all. So because it's a rare, not a common, like a not a like a Flame Strike is. Totally forgot we had Summoning Stone in this deck. I don't think we have that. We have like six spells to combo with it too, which is sad. Maybe we'll get lucky this game and we'll be able to play it. So he's gonna start off on turn two with the Northshire Cleric. All right, what a nice card. Do we coin into the three drop? Do we have another three drop to play? We do not. Do we just weapon here? I think we coin. Because next turn we can passive and then uh, it'll gain Wind Fury. So we actually can swing into the one three and then what else? Uh, whatever else he plays. Unless he's got Shadow Ward Pain, which would really shut us down pretty hard. So there's Mad Bomber. Hopefully he doesn't hit my guy. Hits him once. Now he can. He still can't heal. So that's good. So we're actually going to be able to kill both his guys here. Actually, no, we don't have to. We can actually backstab. Sweet. So, or we can... Hmm. So we backstab this, attack into this, and then play Haunted Creeper, or do we use our weapon? I think Haunted Creeper is a little bit more important. Just to, again, have a creature on the board. Yeah. I would rather, instead of do three damage, put a creature on the board. It does give us a weapon, but we'll get we'll get in a weapon next turn, and we'll be able to Iron Beak and or use this whatever the fuck this mechanical card is. Okay, so he plays the Shadow Boxer, he heals himself, and it's going to deal one damage. Hopefully it doesn't hit the Rider. Hopefully it doesn't hit the Rider. Don't hit the fucking Rider. doesn't hit the Rider. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so... Pretty sure we use this. We kill off his... Uh, his little mechanical thing like that. We st again, we still don't use our weapon because it would cost us not playing a creature. And as an arena, playing creatures is like one of the most important things is to have board control. I don't know how many times I've said it, but I can... Oh, no. Silenced our spider. We won't get little spiderlings now. Rip. So, like, even if we take face damage here um, through, like, using our weapon and attacking... Whoa, my mouse is fucking up. Hold on, guys. I'm, like, trying to move my mouse around, and it's, like, being, like, autistically slow. Whoa, shit. Are you working, mouse? All right, here we go. Um, should we play Summoning Stone? I don't think Summoning Stone is a bad play in here. We'll kill this off. And then next turn, if he doesn't do anything, we can actually oil and or assassinate whatever he plays. And so we'll be able to make a trade and make a five drop out of it, which I think is pretty cool. Did we just forget to attack with our 2-4? I cannot remember. 
do don't want don't, don't win don't win don't win yeah buddy we forgot to attack with our two four i'm sorry this mouse thing fucked me up hard okay so do we actually use assassinate here that's the question I don't think so. I think actually we might. I think we do. Just because I want to see what comes out of Summoning Stone. Salty dog. Salty dog. That's pretty funny. I'm pretty salty. He's like a skeletal knight, but he doesn't have that stupid fucking joust ability. He even looks pretty fucking salty. Look at this little scrub. Velen's chosen onto the ghoul, making it a 4-7. That's kind of annoying, but at the same time, not really that annoying, because we have an iron beak. Poor guy. So now it's now we can deal with it quite effectively. Um let's throw down the weapon. Let's draw a card. Okay. Um Do we kill off our uh, leper? I think we do. I mean, it really doesn't matter which one we kill off. This one can be healed, this one can't, so I think we do kill off the leper. Because it'll deal uh, the damage right away now, as this, not that we, I don't think we have any healing cards in this deck, but if we do, we can heal that up. As for the leper, we can't heal it up at all. Like, it's just capped out at the 2-1. And we'll also get some, its effect right away, just in case he silences it or something. Whew. Shadow Ward Pain onto the Summoning Stone. That's fine. I mean, we were going to play probably uh, Oil next turn. But, I mean, it's it pretty much got its effect by playing Salty Dog. Which he hasn't killed, by the way, at all. Okay, so we can... If we have Oil right now, do we win? Because that's 6, 8, 10. Yeah, that's definitely game if we Oil. So we just pretty much have to play... Hmm. I'll give him another turn. I don't want to... But maybe the oil won't land on the target it needs to land on. Bring him at 1 HP. I know I could have Iron for Grizzly and then Tinker, but if it would have landed on the Iron for Grizzly, we'd be in the same situation as we're in now, where, you know, we have one turn to wait, and he could potentially, you know, do something where it clears field. I don't know. I'd rather play the safer route. So I believe, what is that, three wins already? Three sweet wins, nice. So we're gonna go on to our fourth game here. Hopefully we'll be able to do just as well. Like I said, seven wins is what I aim for. Anything past seven wins is like extra sprinkles on top of the donut. Um, unless we get like a really, really good arena deck that we obviously should know. We should get like 10 plus wins and then it's just like, yeah, you get two legendaries like a Usera and a Sylvanas, it's just like 12 wins. Done deal. Done deal. Let's actually make sure we're recording how we're supposed to be, which we are. I'm just waiting for that one time where I'm like, I do like three hours worth of playing and then it just doesn't record. So do we keep the mind control tech even though it won't get its ability right away? It's still a three drop and it's still a three three. So I think we do. Wow, that curve. Oh boy. That boy, oh boy. So Leper, if he wants to coin out the, uh, coin out, if he wants to coin into his passive, that's perfectly fine waste coin and he doesn't develop a creature because we still have a two drop we still have a three drop and then we still hopefully will be able to draw into the four drop okay so he plays the mana worm which is perfectly fine okay so we drew into the th an, a decent three drop as well um so we can actually use our weapon here to get rid of the mana worm completely or do we just play the haunted creeper swinging in the mana worm but the problem is if he plays a spell hmm all right we know we're swinging into this like, that's just, we know that's going to happen. But do we play the Haunted Creeper? I think we do. Because he has to play a spell in order for that to get buffed. So that's already a, a possibility. He may not have a two-drop spell. And then from there, for him to attack the Haunted Creeper instead of going face is another probability that we don't know. And then from there, he's going to have to use an ability to kill the other two spiders to get true value out of killing the Haunted Creeper with a card that's at one health, which is another possibility. So that's three possibilities that have to happen in Arena that's mostly not likely. So he's going to go face because he probably doesn't have a spell and he's going to use his passive to ping face. Worst, best case scenario. Worst case scenario, he like double arcane missiles and just fucks our whole day up. Why does my leg itch so much? Holy shit. I'm wearing like these new pajama bottoms I got. Why the fuck did I just call them pajama bottoms? 
<laughs> I'm not even gonna say anything anymore. Holy shit, who the fuck says pajama bottoms? You can just say new, like, nice pajamas or new silky, you know, pants. Pajama bottoms. Rip. I know I'm gonna get a whole bunch of comments now, like, how you like your pajama bottoms? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh man. Uh do we do we definitely don't weapon here? Uh we definitely kill mana worm. And do we play mind control tech? Pretty sure we do. And the reason we do this is because the Argent the horse rider is not gonna get that much value out of it. If he pings off, you know, one of the 1-1s one or kills off our 3-3, three, three, that's fine. As long as our 1-1 one, one of our... Oh, no. Okay, that was bad. Don't hit my 1-1s. One, that's perfectly fine. All right. All right. The whole plan I just had planned out there. It's just gone. Combo deal one damage. Unfortunately, we don't have another 2-drop to uh, bring him out. So I think it's the horse rider's time to shine. And then we're going to have to kill off... We could weapon here. But he still doesn't get the... No. No, 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 no. We have to play him. There we go. So we still have initiative on the board. And then I guess if he uses his passive to ping off the 2-1, he's only going to be able to play a 2-drop creature at best. And then we still have the Ass Blade and or the Pit Fighter to play. Do we Ass Blade here? I think we Ass Blade. Takes out his creature. Next turn, we'll be able to play Pit Fighter. The weapons develop, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to play Acidic Swamp Booster, Harrison Jones. If he does, that's game over. Draw three cards. I would cry. I would cry. All right. Do we super develop field, or we just play Pit Fighter? I'm pretty sure we just play the fighter, and then we'll swing, and then we'll swing. Next turn, we can play the mechanical, whatever the fuck she's called, and this cool-looking dude. This guy looks so cool but it's just like he's not that great combo deal one damage i mean that's good but it's just like what makes him better than a knife juggler i guess you get to pick where the one damage goes but you actually have to combo him he's not he's not even counted as like a pirate or anything if he's counted as a pirate or something like cool like that it'd be awesome but he's just like nothing he's just like a card i guess he's riding a cool mount i guess i like how this guy's getting faced which makes me think he's got like double fireball or pyroblast in his hand Mooklas, that's obviously gonna die next turn without a doubt. So, um, we can't. Oh man, no, we can. We can still do that, All right? So we swing this face. Yeah, swing this face. We blade fury hits all these for three. Then we valent this, hit it for one. Swing this for five. And then we play this to draw one. Cool beans. I really wanted to play the, this guy right here. But there was there's just not enough mana. So how much damage do we have? We have 9, 10. So we actually have to draw until 1 because he's at 11. Normally I don't use Blade Fury that like openly. Unless I'm going to kill at least like two or more creatures. But those two creatures are pretty big. I mean a 5-5 five, five is kind of hard to get rid of with this deck. Especially if I don't draw an Assassinate. Uh, I kind of want to get rid of him to get rid of those fireballs, which I knew he had some in his hand. And a Forgotten Torch to kill the 3-2. Jesus. Colt Master's nice, but we're not actually going to use that yet. We're going to save that so he can make a really good trade later on. And we're going to, like, if he doesn't Flame Strike here, and he plays, like, a decent creature, and we don't have lethal, because if it's Taunt, we're just going to Colt Master and refresh our hand. If he does Flame Strike here, we are so fucked. <laughs> But I'm assuming he didn't flame strike because last turn he used fireball and forgotten torts instead of a flame strike. So that makes me think he didn't have it. Mad bomber. Of course, hits the two one, hits the two two, and the two one. Wow, those are some really good picks you just got there with that mad bomber. Jesus, I, that was probably the best thing he could have asked for right there. This is five six, still not lethal. Drawn of this great movement. Draw any charge card. I'm not sure if there's one in the deck or not, but we win. I don't actually have the deck up, deck list on the side like we normally do, so I can't like say whatever the best card is because I'm not sure. I'll pull that up in my next arena run though. I'll be sure to include that. Spell slinger. 
What the fuck am I gonna do with anything can happen? Nothing's gonna happen because no murlocs were killed. Alright, um... I'm pretty sure I use this. It does three to this, then I can kill off that and kill off this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Then we do this. We do that. Draw one. Kill off this. Attack. End our turn. And if he pings off the 2-1, we draw. And I don't think he's going to deal anything to that 2-4. Unless he's got like a frost bolt and or again a flame strike. Draw into his roaring torch. Arcane missiles will probably kill the 2-1 prior. So unless he pings that for, pings the 4-2 for one, then arcane missiles. And then it's like a 50-50 shot. It all depends here. But anything could happen was like the most useless card we could have possibly got. Besides like the like a shield bash or something or it depends on how much armor we have and we'll never have armor but this is like even worse than that because that's like a spell we could combo with something but this we can't even combo with anything because it's a 10 mana like come on <laughs> these i uh, anything could happen that's a cool picture though like yeah, the murlocs are pretty fucking buff like they definitely got some definition in their arms the weapons really aren't they're scary but i guess if you saw like a pack of like six murlocs how many are there six yeah six murlocs and all different kinds of color they even have like bright colors so you know they're poisonous i guess that'd be pretty creepy it's like a bad dream which reminds me should i share to you share with you guys my dream that i had last night it was like the weirdest dream i think i probably top five weirdest dreams i've ever had after this next turn i might share it with you no no, no I, can't, I can't share it with you i can't nope 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 so how much damage do we have here? Six, seven? Oh, there's game. We're just waiting for that eviscerate. Nice draw, nice draw. So 4 0 with this rogue deck. Making our way up. What would you call this? Can't making our way up the ladder. Or down the ladder, because we're not playing ladder. Making our way down the arena road. Going fast. Here we go. Grabbing keys now. 